So what I'll do first is a quick recap of the last seminar. Uh, if you'd like to watch the last seminar on how to sell healthy fish, then if you just go to PIAA Aquatics on YouTube and you can watch the last seminar. Um, if at any point you get questions, by all means, um, hit us up. I'll, I'll see how much of this content I can get through this time. So as a quick recap, the key to selling healthy fish is to know what a healthy fish looks like, um, is to create a good relationship with your supplier, um, to preferably have one supplier per system, because that aids accountability, and to communicate well with your supplier, and to change supplier if it's not working. Um, you want to buy on quality and service, not price, because dead fish are not cheap fish. Um, you never buy fish for a system unless the system is running perfectly. One very, very common um, Groundhog Day mistake I see in the industry is that people will lose a tank of fish, they will then blame the supplier, they'll demand the supplier replace their fish, the supplier replaces their fish, and then they lose a tank of fish because they really haven't addressed what was wrong in the first place. They basically just blamed the supplier, which may or may not have actually been the reason. So it's really important to tick your own boxes and make sure that what you're doing is working before you go blaming the supplier. And I would recommend not blaming the supplier. I would recommend having a conversation, telling them what's going on, asking them their advice, and then you'll find that half the time they will offer to replace the fish if it seems that um, they value your relationship and that, that they feel respected. And a lot of the time, if they have a bad batch of fish, they'll actually tell you. They'll go, look, to be honest, those guppies weren't that good. How about I just send you another batch and we'll, we'll move on. It is amazing when you're honest with people, it is amazing how um, honest that they'll actually be back with you. The next thing is you need to record your dead fish. And once again, if it's not broken, you don't have to fix it. If you're really not losing fish and your tanks are all healthy and your customers are all happy, then it is very easy to get complacent, but you do need to watch that because over time, you may have staff changes, you may have condition changes, and then if you do start to see, hang on, you've got some unhappy customers, some fish are getting through the system and polluting your customers' tanks, or you're starting to lose more of your own fish, then you really want to go back to the basics again. You want to start pressing all those buttons again, recording those fish, finding out what's going on. The next thing um, is water testing. Fish keeping is basically 50% water quality and 50% food quality. Um, most food in the aquarium industry is just processed pressure cooked crap, but when you get a good quality food, it'll usually be cold extruded, or it'll be slow cooked, and it'll be much more holistic, and the health of your fish is going to be unbelievably better. Um, as I recommended in the last um, seminar, which you can see on YouTube, is a lot of my job as a consultant, is I go to this person's house, I look at their aquarium, and the fish look great, and I test the water, and it's terrible, and then I look in the cupboard, and I see good quality food. I can very well go to the very next house, all the fish are dying, I'll test the water, it's much better than the first house, but then I look in the cupboard, and sure enough, we've got bad quality food. Now it's really important that you record your water tests. There's lots of apps available now, um, there's also things like the spin test that will record your, um, your tests for you. But you need to have a, um, a log book or some way of actually monitoring and recording your tests. And you need to make sure that the right fish go into the right systems. And you want to regularly be involved with an, an expert or experts because it doesn't matter how much of an expert you are, Sometimes you just don't see the forest for the trees, um, especially when it comes to your own shop. So I've been in the industry for, uh, since 94, and I'm regularly talking with other experts. So people like Anthony Ramsey, people like Gareth Barber, 
and I will regularly just bounce with him, with them what's going on. And often, it's not a matter of them teaching me something, it might be a matter of them, which sometimes I do, but it might be a matter of them just reminding me of something or just seeing something that I'm not doing because they're actually um, looking at it from the outside. So as far as your fish are concerned, you need to have a system that works. If you um, manage your fish properly and you're getting good results and your fish are happy, then that's all good. But I'm also a big believer in updating your systems every seven years. So after seven years, your systems tend to look pretty tired. And I can pretty much tell you that if you go and put a new system in, your sales will go up, your inspiration will go up, and your customers will re-engage. So in my belief, you set your system up with a seven-year turnaround. That's my, um, that you don't, so many people have the same system for 20 years. And that's okay if you want to do that, but in my experience, you're always learning and you're always going, oh, I wish it was like this. So updating it allows you to keep improving and allow your system to improve. And creating relationships with people like Gareth is really worth it. You know, he'll go out of his way, create CAD drawings for you, and really help you to make sure that your system is as good as possible. Because if you keep improving your system, you'll tend to cut down your losses and you'll tend to cut down your time. And you'll re-inspire yourself. Now it's really important that every system has very good surface agitation. Oxygen is absolutely key. And so this in this industry, I see little pockets of aquarium shops that really go it alone. And it's them versus the world. But that's really not what we're creating here as an industry. As an industry, we would like to all work together and you'll be surprised how much passion you'll get from people like myself, Anthony Ramsey, um, Gareth Barber and others. That how much we love to share our knowledge and basically the better your aquarium shop is and the more people are keeping fish, then um, the healthier the industry is. Now I was um, lucky enough to read a fairly significant study which was done into fish keeping, which basically mapped out where all the fish keepers are and basically found that your average person will drive 20 minutes to an aquarium shop and so therefore if there's a good amount of aquarium shops in an area, the ratio of people in that area was significantly increased and the businesses in that area did significantly better. The businesses that are out on their own basically are relying on their own draw of customers and their, their pool of customers is much lower. So if you're able to work with another shop, preferably if they're sort of 15, 20 minutes away, let's say that their big focus is salt water, yours is fresh water, whatever, but the more people you can draw to that area that keep fish, um, the more um, successful the area tends to be. Now, it's really important to have a good relationship with a fish fair because it's absolutely crucial that you have the availability to um, veterinary medications. And veterinary medications must be done via diagnosis. So for example, if I get a bad batch of guppies, you can just guess the medication, oh yeah, chuck some malefic in, she'll be all right. You really need to use targeted medications. And if you do start getting into antibiotics and all the veterinary medications, what you need to be aware of is resistance. So you don't want to just go randomly bombing these systems with these medications, otherwise you will decrease the efficiency of the medications and they're very expensive. So if you if you start to have a bit of a problem, I'd be getting the vet in, the vet will do a microscope test, because you know every time that you go, oh my system's just not working properly, get the vet in, it'll cost you a few hundred dollars, but if you actually look at um, the targeted response the vet can give, and then you can actually knock that as opposed to you try it and then after a week or two you work out it didn't work and you might try another meditation in a week or two you work out it doesn't work in the meantime you bought and sold all sorts of fish and you passed on that disease potentially to a whole lot of your customers so you're not doing yourself a favor in any way shape or form so if you're seeing any issues with your fish you just give the vet a call the vet comes down, the vet does some tests with the microscope, 
the vet then administers um, veterinary medications, you knock it on the head, and you're not um, diluting the resistance of your fish, because you never want to overuse veterinary medications, otherwise you will um, decrease the efficiency of the medications. Um, so once again, the PIAA is set up to unite the industry, so if you do have any issues, then by all means, make sure you're a member of the PIAA. There's a lot going on in the industry at the moment that we need your support for. They're, at the moment, they're trying to ban the grey list, so that's something that we're trying to fight. If they do ban the grey list, we're all in a lot of trouble. That means we can no longer sell most cichlids, we can no longer sell anything that can't be imported. So the PIAA is working on your behalf, so um, we really need you to be a part of it and we need your name on that list because what really matters is how much of the industry we represent because that gives us more power to help represent you and it does cost time and money. Now as far as disease control is concerned, my eyes are not that good anymore. Um, okay, so it's saying um, we want to be looking for disease on a daily basis. The best time to look for disease is when you're feeding the fish. Now, one of the best things you can do as a business owner is be the fish feeder. Because your staff will just go around and feed the fish. Sometimes they won't even open the lid. It's not that uncommon that I get up on the ladder and I go, oh Jesus, half the food's all over the lids. So they haven't even got it in the fish tank, little what fed the fish. And if you personally feed your fish, what that does is keeps you in a relationship with your fish. And, and if you just, open the lid up, put some food in, watch the fish eating. It really gives you that little 30 seconds with those fish and it gives you a chance to see if there's anything wrong so you can fix it. Because nobody cares about your fish like you do. Now, um, when possible, I feed my fish. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm digesting cream feeding the fish every day. Um, in my heart I am. But where possible, go around and feed all your own fish. Because when you're feeding your fish and they're not coming up and they're not responding, that's really giving you the best opportunity to see what's wrong for you to actually fix it. Because the aquarium industry can be a wonderful industry, but it can also be absolutely heartbreaking. And when you get diseases go through your system, you, you really do wonder why you do it. I'm also a big fan of separate systems per supplier. Because if I'm going to have a relationship with a supplier, and I'm going to get upset if the fish are up, sick, it really isn't fair for there to be three different suppliers worth of fish in that system. It gives me no accountability. If I go, right, this is my bay fish system, that's my aquarium industry system, and, and then therefore, for, and whatever suppliers you're using, therefore, when you have a conversation with them about what's gone wrong with the fish, you're not accusing them of, of, um, of bringing in a disease that actually one of the other suppliers fish may have, may have actually bring in. Now I'm a big fan of UV sterilizers. I like to have, run my UV sterilizers, I run them on all my systems, and I majorly, majorly, majorly oversize them. Make them as big as possible, and run the water through them very slow, and make sure you're replacing the tubes on a yearly basis. When I'm medicating, I'll turn them off, but just for general disease control, I will absolutely have them on. So once again, your fish, in your shop, you need to be feeding the best quality foods you possibly can. Um, over the years, I've become very biased towards the couple of foods, but um, that's because I get very good results from them. And I've ended up involved with this food. Uh, I didn't start off. Now, um, it's also really important you never contaminate your systems. So you'd never want to pull an ornament out of this system and throw it in that system, or use a fishnet from this system into that system. Otherwise you can bring pathogens from one system to another. Now there's various pathogens that can be in with these fish and it not be a problem, you're not seeing any issue. And then in a stressful environment like that, the worst thing you want to do is um, transfer pathogens from one system to another. So you need to have a net bucket where you're going to um, be able to sterilise your fish nets or you just have a hook that you hook them on and then you don't use those fish nets until they're completely dry but most people will just dump them in a, um, in a, in a sterilisation and make sure that they're sterilised. Um, so, so I'll normally have the aquarium vet come about once a quarter, go around, do some tests in the system, 
um, spend some time with the staff and train the staff. And um, the vet has to come on a semi-regular basis in order for them to keep writing you those scripts. Because what you need are those scripts. Don't ever think that you could run a commercial fish uh, um, system with off-the-shelf medications. It's delusional. Get yourself a relationship with a vet and get real medication and the quality of your fish will absolutely go up. Um, so once again, to ask for help. So many shops, I'll just stumble into a shop, I'll introduce myself, I'll start chatting to them, and I just see these same problems over and over, and people go, oh, that's just what happens. I'm like, no, that's not what happens. That's what you let happen. So in my shop, when it's well managed, when I'm buying from good suppliers, when I have a competent person looking after it, when I have the regular availability of veterinary diagnosis and medications, I don't lose many fish. And if you go through a phase where suddenly you're pulling out tank loads of fish, or you're pulling out dead fish there and dead fish there and dead fish there, there is no way you're gonna make a profit in your business. That complacency is gonna cost you all your money, and most of all, it's gonna cost you your passion and it's also going to cost you a lot of your customers. Because the thing is, these days people are completely non-confrontational. Which means if they buy fish from you and they lose the fish, it's, it's rare that they'll actually come back. A lot of the time they just don't come back. And if they have a, that experience a couple of times, then they're almost definitely not going to come back. Old school, well, they'll come back. They'll come back and yell and scream and carry on and blame you. But that's not really how people are now, especially young people. Young people are much more interested in just giving you a, just barring you. So focusing on the quality of your fish is absolutely crucial to your business. And getting experts in on a semi-regular basis is a wonderful thing. I'll get friends of mine with as much or more experience than me go through and go, hey look, just see if you can give us some tips. And they'll point out stuff. I mean, I've been in the industry since 94. There's not much I haven't seen, but there's a lot that I forget. I, I've relearned way more stuff in this industry than I've ever learned. Because the reality is, you just get stuck in a paddle, pattern and you do what you do. And then sometimes you've had an aha moment that's really revolutionized your business but over time you've just managed to stop doing it. And then sometimes you need to have that exact same realization again. So asking for help and aligning yourself with other people in the industry is something that I absolutely recommend that everyone um, gets involved in. Now I'm also very big on one person per task. So I'm really not a fan of a checklist that everyone's involved in. Now, unfortunately, sometimes that's a reality, but I really think people need to own these, these, these jobs. So, um, giving someone ownership in a particular um, part of the business and rewarding the people for success is really, really important. You've got to make those people accountable and reward them for their success. Now, you've got to make sure that a system is completely ready for fish before you add new fish. The worst thing you can do is go up to your office and just add the just go and order a bunch of fish and then just hope they're going to go in your system somewhere. It's much better to order your fish from your fish rack and you look at the tank and you go, oh yeah, some corridors that look cool in there. So choose some corridors for there. Then look at this tank and go, oh, that could do with some more barbs. Then order the barbs. I'm a big fan of order your fish to your tanks, not order your fish from a list. Also, if there's anything wrong with the tank, could you look at it? You know, all that guami's a bit, how you going? Don't order any guamis. So you're looking at the tank and you're choosing the fish for the tank. That's going to allow you to not overpopulate the tank or even underpopulate it. Because you may, you may know that if you go to a shop and the tank's overpopulated, the fish will look wonderful. But that's assuming they're healthy and everything's good. If you overpopulate it and you do it too quickly, or the system can't handle it, then you start losing all those fish and that's really expensive. 
and then if you underpopulate the tank, then a lot of the fish, when there's not many fish around, they stress more, they get sick easier, and they all hide. So you can have a tank with eight fish in it, and you can't see them. You could turn that eight fish into 20 fish, and suddenly they're all swimming around and everyone's happy and they're stressless and they're healthier and then you start to sell them. So just be aware that every aquarium has an optimal stocking rate. So we want to have not too many fish and we definitely don't want to have not enough fish. Also, we've got to look at the acclimatization. Some um, fish are very sensitive to the, the way they need to be acclimatized. Other ones seem really tough. And everything comes down to if it's not broken, you don't have to fix it. So don't get tied up trying to do every single checklist perfectly. But what you do want to do is monitor your results. And if you see an issue, if you're losing all of a particular fish, then that's what you need to get interested in and that's what you need to change. So you need to change either the way you're acclimatizing them, the way you're buying them, or who you're buying them from. But um, you need to look for problems and then ask for help. So never be afraid to ask for help. Yeah, so animal welfare is something that we really have to focus on now. Gone are the days where we sell fish for little vases and we really need to be looking at the animal. I don't ever want anyone buying an animal unless they understand what the fish is, what it requires, and then you never want to sell the animal unless you feel that that person knows what the fish is and what it requires. Because the ethics of this industry is something that will make or break us, so we really need to be focusing all the time on is this animal happy? And then the other thing that's quite interesting is um, I read a study a long time ago in Reader's Digest, so it definitely must be true. That, um, that, very spe that studies have been done into species of fish and actually found that a species of fish in a appropriately sized aquarium is actually happier, healthier, lower cortisol levels, um, lower respiration rates, um, and from everything they can measure is actually happier in an appropriately sized aquarium than they is in the wild. So we have an opportunity to keep very happy fish providing that we give them what they actually want. Also, I'm a big fan of every time that you're talking to a customer, we recommend that they bring a sample of water and a video every time they come to see us. And particularly new saltwater customers will really try to get them to bring their logbook as well. But the success of your business is the success of your customers. The more interested you get in making sure your customers are successful, the more they will become your advocates and the more that word of mouth will spread. Try not to ever, ever let a fish leave your shop if you think it's not going into the right circumstance. If you think the customer shouldn't buy fish, never adopt the philosophy, which I hear, oh, he'll just go and buy it somewhere else. If the tank is not ready or if the fish is not right for the tank let them go and buy it somewhere else because the money that you make selling the wrong animal is not worth it and the damage that does to your business is not repairable because the credibility that you will get with your customers and the genuine love that they feel and see that will come back to you a thousand times so if a customer's gonna buy a fish, you go, hey, this fish, it's really not appropriate for your tank. Let's go look at the ones that are. And just don't sell them those fish. And even though they might go around the corner and buy that fish, it really isn't appropriate. And you'll sleep better at night and your business will be better by making sure that you don't let fish leave that um, shop unless they're going into the right position. It'd be like selling someone a Great Dane and you know they live in a two bedroom apartment. You know, you can make the money, that's fine, but it really isn't in the best interest of the animal. We really need to be in a position now 
where we're selling our fish with the, the welfare of the fish as our very first consideration because that's how we're going to that's how we're going to grow the industry and that's how we're going to make sure that we don't have problems so i don't know if you guys know but there's groups available that, that are out there now basically out to shut down the pet industry they believe that we don't have the right to ship animals they believe that um that fish in a tank no thanks so what we don't want to do is give them any ammunition we we need to promote the welfare we need to promote never dump these fish and it's really important to have a um, rehoming program so at majestic aquariums any time that someone says i've got this fish i want to get rid of um, they'll usually say oh, how much will you give us we'll say hey look we really don't pay for um, for a fish but we will rehome it for you most people just bring them down anyway so it's a great way to get yourself some free stock but at the same time what you're doing is making sure that that person isn't going to earn and you're just dumping it in a, in a natural waterway which obviously is much more of an issue for Queenslanders than, um, than Victorians but depending on the species so we, we want to encourage the fish to come back to your shop and that allows us to be responsible for their fish instead of um, releasing them into any natural waterway so a lot of your business is about respecting your fish respecting your team respecting your customers and then you'll find that you know it's absolutely wonderful as far as your business is concerned now um once again i really believe that everyone should join the piwa because it's together that we're going to fight these um issues like you may not know but um that there was a a proposal to put all of the the fish on the Great Barrier Reef on the CITES list. So things like that, the PIAA are involved in to try and make sure those things don't happen. There's various quarantine reviews in at the moment, which once again, the PIAA is there to represent you. And if any of these things go wrong, which certainly they have in the past, and there's lots of examples such as um, Hawaii, they closed Hawaii for absolute politics. There was no ecological reason whatsoever. Those fish were not in danger and they closed it for government, for, um, for political ideology. So we could lose our industry just like that. Now, if you haven't heard of the uh, um, Aquarium Care 101 course, I'd really recommend that you do it, get all your staff to do it. It's actually really good. Um, so this was done in coordination with the Aquarium Vet, and what we've done is um, provided a water quality course which anyone can do for free. So if you've got a person that's thinking about working with you, if they're like, oh, Jason, can I have a job? You go, okay, get this link, go and watch this and pass the test and then come back and see me. Bring me your certificate. And they can print out a little certificate, their mum will be very proud, and then they can give it to you and go, hey, look, I did pass it. So that way at least it's a little screening process so you know that that person's at least taken the hour or whatever it's taken them to actually pass the test and you know that they, at least they've been exposed to the basics of fish keeping. Um, the Aquarium Vet has other courses that you can go on and pay for which are more advanced and we are, as a, as a PIAA, we're actually trying to do everything we can to empower the industry and to try and make sure that the shops that we represent are selling healthy fish to environments that the fish belong and are suited to. So if you want to learn more as well, I am the Aquatic Director and um, Vice President of the Pet Industry Association and I'm available for anyone that needs me. I'm very easy to get hold of, um, either through the Pet Industry Association or paul at majesticaquariums.com.au. Um, I'm very passionate about building a bigger industry. Um, I have a lot of vested interest in the industry and most of all, it's been my passion. So since grade five, that's when I started keeping fish, I pretty much committed my life to fish. Um, so I, all my life, all I've ever wanted to do is work in fish and be a rock star. Um, I, I play in bands, but unfortunately, not everyone knows that I'm a rock star, so that hasn't really worked out for me. But um, fish has definitely been something that I very much enjoy. And I, and I love to share that with you. So also go onto the PIAA Aquatics YouTube channel. Um, we've got lots of videos there. Some of them are actually good. 
And if you send me an email, I, actually I'm going to look at putting a page up on the PIAA website of the videos that I suggest you watch. And these sorts of things are really great to help to streamline the um, training of your, your team as well. So the key to have a good aquarium shop is basically constant improvement. You want to just keep improving and keep improving. And the way that you keep improving in reality is your team. So I have team members that have been there for 20 years, 12 years, 8 years. Um, I have some staff that uh, they're really, really good. And the way that I keep these staff is you want to keep training them and you want to keep rewarding them. So if you get someone looking after your fish room and they're doing a really good job, you need to keep rewarding that person. Because a, a lot of the people in the industry um, that work in the industry, they feel like it's a dead end job. And if they're in a situation where there's not a path, then it sort of, it will be a dead end job. But actually it doesn't have to be a dead end job because you need to create that path. Because I can tell you now the value of some of my team that are highly trained, highly engaged, and they are, um, let's say, KPI'd up, meaning that when they do a great job and they get great results, they earn more money, it keeps them there, you know what I mean? They feel rewarded, they feel appreciated, they see the difference they make. And to me, I'll have this person doing this section, and I will reward and acknowledge and um, um, make sure that they're financially benefiting from that hard work, then this person does that. I see other shops and this little guy does that and that and that and that and that and that. And that. He's not really, he's just doing a little bit of everything. He's got no ownership in anything. Um, he, and there's no reward or path for that person. So I think it's really important to sit down with your staff and you need to understand what it is that makes them tick, what it is that inspires them, because ultimately, if you have a company, they are your power. So keep training them. Once again, the PIAA is trying to make this as easy as possible for you. And on a one-on-one -on -one level, is really how it works best. I've been very involved in the last 30 years with other shops and helping to train other shops. And basically, when the engagement's there, you really see the results. And it's really important to record. You need to record the results. So like, for example, if you've got someone that's running your fish room, you need to be rel relaying back what percentage of the business that is, for example. So they need to know where they're at and where they go to. Like, let's say that you're a pet shop and the aquarium is 8% of the business. You need to play a game with your fish guy, which is how do we make 8% be 12%? What's in it for them? What strategies can they use to get eight to 12? And what rewards do they get for getting eight to 12? Then next year, the game becomes, how does 12 go to 15? So putting these little games in place, you'll find that the team member will be much more engaged. You'll find that they'll be much more rewarded. They'll be much more interested. But if you don't set targets, and if you don't um, um, involve your team in trying to create strategies and trying to um, get goals, I promise you, you'll lose them. Whereas if you go back to your shop and sit down with every person, and you want to get them to help you create the aims. So you say, hey look, let's make this better. What do you see? When the team member goes, hey, you know what? Let's try and make that better. Then make that your priority. Because in my business, a lot of the time that I spend is actually doing all the stuff that my staff don't want to do. I clean out fish ponds, I move fish tanks, and I actually end up doing the things that they don't want to do. Because if you want a good team, then you have to lead from the front. You can't be one of those guys that gets, the, the, the old days are gone, where you just tell them what to do and they do it. You've got to give them, I believe, you've got to give them responsibilities. You've got to let them see their own progress. 
you've got to monitor their progress and then they need to be rewarded for that actual progress. So once again, talking to each other is really how we um, inspire each other. And I think this event is hopefully the first in a whole new tradition. In the old days, like the 2000 plus, the expo was the highlight of the year. Right now, this is the first one we've had in like eight years or something like that. But now that the expo's back, if everyone can start engaging with it again, for about 10 years of my life, the PIAA Expo was my holiday. It was the only time I could justify getting away from my business. And we all became great friends. And it really, it was a completely tax deductible holiday that I could justify. I'd look forward to it all year. It was like Christmas. And then all the people in the industry end up becoming your friends, you know? And having an industry that plays together stays together, you know? If we all work together and we have the common goal of getting more fish keepers. Now, thanks to various surveys that we've had available to us, um, some of the information available to us through the pet show, some of the information available to us through the animal companion guide, we as an industry have the best opportunity for growth in any other industry you'll ever find. The reason being is that there are so many people that want to keep fish, but they don't. And the reason why they don't is not even real, it's a, it's a myth. A lot of people keep fish because they think it's more expensive than it has to be, so that's not even true. A lot of people don't keep fish because they think it's harder than it has to be, and a lot of people keep fish because they think it takes up more room and time than it has to. So once again, a few mountain clouds or a um, Simon, Simon's fighting fish in a, a small filtered aquarium is not hard and it's not expensive, and that gives them the bug, and then they join our hobby, and next thing you know, they want a bigger tank and a bigger tank. So um, anyway, thank you very much for coming to the show. Um, thanks for your attention. Um, if you'd like to watch this video again, um, or the previous version of this, because I've got a wrap up, then make sure you go on the PIAA Aquatics YouTube channel. And on that channel, you'll find lots of other great content. And the main thing that I, w I guess I want to say is that you're not alone. There are very passionate experts who would love to help you be more successful, but join the community, join the PIAA, and um, let's make this industry awesome.